Fantastic. Okay, next one's a little bit more involved, right? We got some parentheses and some exponents kind of attached to each other. So we're going to ignore this part of the first part of our problem. We're going to go straight for our parentheses. That's what we do first. So I'll just rewrite it. Remember, at this point, we're really doing step by step, just piece by piece until we get this stuff just down that we get right every time. We don't want to be rushing this. There's no reason for that. This is the problem we're working on right now. It's okay. So we're going to ignore everything else but that piece. We're going to get, instead of 8 minus 6, that's going to give us 2. But remember that's still squared. Now you can choose to do a couple things here. You can just put a 2 squared like this and multiply it. That's okay. Or you can, if you want the parentheses there, you can have the parentheses there. It really doesn't make that much of a difference. So if you still want to do it like this, which some of you might have that on your paper, that's fine. As long as you've done the operations inside the parentheses first, you're fine on that. Do you understand that part of it? Okay, so I'm going to leave it like this just for fun. Because this is super fun, right? Yeah. Right. yeah. They're all saying, yeah. Now you're on record. Ah. Okay, so now we go for our exponents since we're done with the parentheses. Now, I know there's still parentheses up there, but what I mean by parentheses is operations within those parentheses, not just single numbers. So here we have the 2 squared. We're going to do that. How much is 2 squared again? 4. So we'll rewrite the 64, all this stuff. We still have the 4, and then the 2 squared, you're right, that's 4. Remember that the 4 next to the parentheses, that means multiplication. Now we're going to go on, since we've done the parentheses and exponents, we've got multiplication and division from left to right. What's the first thing we're going to do here? A multiplication or a division in this case? Yeah. So again, we see that division comes first from left to right. We'll do that piece of it. We'll get 8. As long as we're doing the, the 64 divided by 8 before the 8 times 2, that's the important part. So notice that the 64 divided by 8 gives us 8, and then we still have the times 2. 8 times 2? Plus, we have some more multiplication. We'll take care of that in just a second. We've got 16 plus the 4 times 4 gives us another 16. And lastly, when we add those two pieces together, we get... Do you feel okay with the order of operations idea? Yes, no. Nod your head, yeah. Okay. Now I believe I did give you a problem that we haven't finished yet from last time. The one with the fraction bar. Did we look at that one yet? No, your... we didn't. I finished it. No. You did? But we didn't do it in class? No. no. Okay. I'll finish that up right now. What you need to know about these large fractions, well that's, that's what we have here, it's just a large fraction, is that the fraction bar implies parentheses. So whenever you see that, it says do what's on the top, then do what's on the bottom, and then divide. You can't do anything before that. So what I want to write down right now is the fraction bar means parentheses, or implies parentheses. fraction bar implies parentheses around the numerator, the top, and the denominator, the bottom. So what we're going to do on this problem, the way you do this successfully, you'd ignore either the top or the bottom first, and do just one part, just work on one part of this. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to ignore the bottom. I'm just going to work on the top of my fraction and do it piece by piece. So when we look up there at the top, we're ignoring this part. Okay, We're just going to ignore that for now. With the 25 plus 8 times 2 minus 3 cubed, what's the first part we should do? Quickly, we've done this several times now. Yes. Okay. And 3 cubed is 9, right? Wait, no. Yes. 3 cubed. So if you guys are not with me today, you need to focus in on this stuff. 27. 27. Very good. How'd you get 27? Because 3 times 3 equals 9, and you add times another 3, it's 27. Perfect. 
So we're going to leave the 25 alone. Plus 8 times 2. We realize we're subtracting 27 here. And again, I'm just ignoring that bottom part of my fraction. I'll, I'll keep going. Next step. The next thing we do is try to keep going on this thing. What's the next thing we would do in this problem? Multiply. Great. So we're going to have 25. I know that that's going to be 16 minus 27. We've got two more steps on the top. Yeah, John. Um, quick question. You said uh, the fraction, right, there's the fraction bars and parentheses. Yeah. But when there's no right parentheses, when you do that first, the bottom part, if there's parentheses there. It doesn't, you get to choose, it's like having a bracket. It's like a, oh, okay. a bracket around the top and a bracket around the bottom. that's how I did it. You can do the bottom first. It, it really, honestly, Jeff, doesn't matter. As long oh, as you do the top independently of the bottom. So do the bottom first and then do the top. That's fine. Uh, as long as you're doing one of them all the way to one number and the other one all the way to one number and then you're going to get it. Okay, good question. Okay, next up. What do we have? You add. Great. So if I add these together, can you tell me what I'm going to have? Would you start? 41. 41. Perfect. Only one more step. We got 41 minus 27, and that gives us. 14. So right now we've worked the numerator or the top of our fraction all the way down to a single number. That's really the process we want to do. We want to stick with it. Just do it step by step till you get down there. Next, we'll work on the denominator. The denominator is going to take us less steps, so we'll probably write the same number a couple times, but that's okay. What's the first thing we're going to do in the denominator? Parentheses. Now we're going to have the 2 stays the same, but in the parentheses, one. how much? One. So the 2 times the 1, how much does that give us? Two. We're going to keep rewriting the 2 because we had those extra steps here. The 2 stays the same all the way through until we're, we have both. Just a single number over a single number on both the top and the bottom. And now we can do what this problem says to do, which is? Divide. Yeah, we're going to divide. 14 divided by 2 gives us? 7. Seven. We're done. So it's not so bad if you really consider this to be like three problems in one. You've got one problem, you got another problem, and then the final problem is put it together. That's really it. Try one of these on your own, and then we'll continue. There we are. So get cracking on that thing. Remember, you can treat this like three problems. Do either the top or the bottom first, then do the other one, then put them together. Hey, by the way, how many people, just out of my own curiosity, have gone on to the website, my website? Good for you. How many people have actually watched one of the videos on there? Good. Awesome. Uh, for the rest of you, if you haven't gone to the website yet, you're going to this evening. I said this to the people who were here a little earlier. Um, I'm going to put the homework assignments on the website only for the next few days to make sure that you can get on there and, and find it, okay? That way you know that resource. Do I have homework? Can I do it? Hmm? We just sat the homework yesterday. I don't think we'll make it through the next section. I don't think so. So it'll be just just the one I gave you yesterday. Okay. And I'll give that website to you one more time at the end of this class to make sure that you can find it. Did you guys finish up over here? Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, cool. Let's do this together then. So I'm going to work on the top first. I like doing that better than doing the bottom first because otherwise I have to write more fractions at the end. I just don't like that. So I'm going to start with the top of our fraction here. So top of our fraction, just like the last one, the exponents comes first. So we should have written on our paper 7 minus 2 times 3 plus this one's going to give us 9. Did you get 9? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Over, and we're going to... 5. Yeah, we're going to fill that in later. You can do it at the same time if you really want to. If you're good at following those steps, I don't really care. As long as you know you do the top one and the bottom one independently. That's really the key here. Then we'll do the 7 times, or minus 6 with our multiplication. Plus 9. Very good. Plus 9. What's going to come first here? Minus. If we add, if we look at this, if we add right now and we do 15, you're actually going to get a negative number out of that. Do you see that? For those of you who have seen negative numbers before, if you haven't, you'd be like, what do we do? Because that's the wrong thing. That's the wrong thing we, we do here. So we are going to subtract first and get how much? One plus nine. Perfect. We'll continue this on. One plus nine, that's going to give us 10. We stop there, then we work on the bottom of our fraction. So the bottom says, we're going to do 5 times 2 minus 1. That 2 minus 1 comes first because it is in parentheses. That gives us 5 times 1. You can have parentheses or not. It doesn't matter. 5 times 1 is 5. We'll write that a couple more times. 2. That's exactly right. How many people were able to get 2? Good. If you didn't, that's okay. Why don't you go back and try this again next time. If you want to follow this on the video, there's, you can do that. Now, the last thing that we're going to talk about in this section is just the area of a square. Now we talked about the area of a rectangle. We can do the length times width. Do you remember that, doing the area of a rectangle? Mm -hmm. Some of you, no, 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 not a bit. That was a little while ago, it was like last week. If we're talking about the area of a square, Let me tell you a couple interesting things about a square that you probably already know, but you probably never really thought about it. What's a rectangle? Four quarters on one Four quarters square. Side. Four sides, okay. What makes a rectangle different than this shape? That has four sides. Is that a rectangle? No. Why not? Rectangle. Equal side. Two equal sides. Two parallel. Well... That has two parallel sides. Is that a rectangle? No. What else makes it a rectangle? It's equal on like two different parts. Okay. That's equal on two different parts. No. That's a parallelogram. Say it louder. Right angles. They are right angles. You know what a right angle is? A right angle means it's like the the. What was it? 90 degrees. 90 degrees. Like the, the wall on the floor. It's a 90 degree angle. It means it's sticking straight up. Perpendicular is another word for that. So what we mean by a rectangle is, okay, rectangles, you guys, you had all the right stuff down. You do. You have two pairs of equal sides that are parallel, and you also have some 90 degree angles in here. That's a rectangle. Now, can you tell me, how's a square different than a rectangle? All four sides are equal. Yeah, they are. Does it still have 90 degree angles? Yeah, it does. Uh -huh. And it still has two pairs of parallel sides. So guess what? A square is a type of rectangle. Every square is a rectangle inherently. That's the definition of it. Not every rectangle is a square. Here's a rectangle that's not a square. Every 